technology is evolving faster and faster. Not surprising when you consider that today, more scientists are doing research than in all of history combined and using superior instruments and communication tools. New technologies like biogenetics, artificial intelligence, implants, and nanotechnology have advanced vastly in the past few decades. These various technologies seem now to be converging towards one goal, to overcome human limits and to create new, higher forms of life, to create something transhuman. Robert Anton Wilson has been calculating this acceleration of knowledge. He calls it the jumping Jesus phenomenon. The jumping Jesus phenomenon is my name for the acceleration of information throughout history. I first got, I first heard of that from uh, Alfred Korzybski, a Polish mathematician who invented a scientific discipline called general semantics. And Kozybski noted that information was doubling faster and faster every generation. And he said, we've got to be prepared for more and more change. We've got to train ourselves to be less dogmatic and more flexible so we can deal with change. He took the unit at 1 AD as his basic unit to calculate how long it took for the information that available to human beings to double, and it took 1,500 years which brought us up to the time when Leonardo da Vinci was in his 40s and the Renaissance was at its height. I decided to call this unit a Jesus. So in 1 AD we had one Jesus, in 1500 we had two Jesus. The next doubling only took 250 years. We already you can see the acceleration factor. And by 1750 we had four Jesus. The next doubling took 150 years and by 1900 we had eight Jesus. The next doubling only took 50 years, and by 1950 we had 16 Jesus. By 1960, in only 10 years, we had 32 Jesus. By 1967, we had 64 Jesus. And by 1973, 128 Jesus. And the latest estimate I've seen by Dr. Jacques Vallée, a, a computer scientist, is that knowledge is doubling every year. But I heard that, oh, about five, six years ago. I saw something on the net recently. Somebody estimated it's doubling about twice a year now. Obviously, if we're experiencing more change now in a year than we previously experienced in a thousand years, we can propagate that trend into the future and see that a day will come when we will experience more change in an hour than we have experienced in the past 20, 30,000 years. A situation like that is unimaginable, so we call it uh, a singularity, a place where the normal rules of modeling break down. Uh, modern religions have anticipated the singularity by calling it uh, the eschaton or the end of time. Technological communities have anticipated the singularity by uh, thinking in terms of artificial intelligences or something like that. In whatever form it takes, we seem to be on the cusp of a dramatic evolutionary leap into a deeper order of complexity than biology or biology plus culture has been able to provide. We're on the brink of something truly awesome and unknown. The world ends A future where knowledge evolves at infinite speed. It is clear that no regular human being will be able to keep up with this acceleration. This is the year. Are you ready? Are you ready for the midnight crash? There's no way to go to Some futurologists anticipate that species of higher intelligence will at one point take over further progress. Only for the few days. These might be artificial intelligences, genetically upgraded humans, or a combination of both. So, yes, we are living on the last day. Most calculations anticipate this moment to be between 2035 and 2045, so it is not a far off science fiction scenario. Sad, sad day coming from 
How can we deal with such a future? It's going to be the worst day of your life. And now, the day of this day is the day. Are you guys only worshiping Jesus or like God? It's like you're just saying that only Jesus can fill that place, and I'm saying that to every person not, there's not an infinite God, Savior. God the you know what I'm saying? It doesn't have to be just Jesus. How do we prepare for such a technocalypse? The singularity I put in 2045. Uh, at that point, the non-biological intelligence that we create that year will be about a billion times greater than all biological human intelligence. There are a growing number, maybe a few hundred people, who are seeing the writing on the wall that these technologies are coming this century and they will allow humanity, if, if we, you know, as human beings, as a species, if we choose, and it's, you know, it's a critical concept, if we choose, we could build godlike, massively intelligent machines with capacities, oh God, trillions of trillions of times above ours. I mean, they, they may reach a certain level of artificial intelligence where they themselves then start redesigning themselves, right? The singularity, that, that, that idea. When, when, when a certain level, a threshold level of intelligence is reached, and then it's no longer human beings who design the next generation. They do it. And they're doing it at the speed of light, electronically. So, <laughs> you know, up, up goes the, the AI queue very fast, and we just lose control. We just sit back and you know, watch, watch what happens. And, and they're the boss. Well, for a long time I've been trying to understand why there is not more resistance to various technological agendas. The computer is an instrument that enables humans to be much more powerful than they ought to be. And so there, anything coming from the computer revolution I will regard as dangerous, ultimately dangerous. In fact, I would say that within the next... 20 to 30 years, we will see the catastrophe. One of the things about technological development, there's never a moment that we can, as I say, stop and evaluate because everybody's saying, oh, wait, 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 it's going to get better, it's going to get better. Oh, yes, there are problems now, there are bugs now, but we will solve them. And so there's an infinite uh, deferring of evaluations and decisions, okay? Um, and that's irrational. You ain't got, a, you ain't got much time left because God said, Christ said, if you don't cut the time short, there'll be no flesh left in the earth. You know that's the mind, the mad scientist. The accelerating pace um, of innovation um, is uh, not only destabilizing, but throws everyone really reeling on the defensive. Okay. Well, we call it stress. People are dropping like flies. Okay. Um, part of it is just the anxiety. Uh, is this is this the way we want to live? Why not slow things down? What's the hurry? I'm not interested in um, a future where there are um, post-human beings if I'm not one of them. I want to be there. It's very important to me that I live and thrive in the future, not just to think about some robot